Welcome to Under the Cardboard Box Podcast, where we talk about Metal Gear and other fun stuff. Which, that other fun stuff is Metal Gear. Yeah, <laughs> just Metal Gear. Just Metal Gear. Uh, to UC Baby. Uh, right now, um, my name is Jairo Martinez, and... I guess later his name will change, but right now my name's Arnaldo Castillo. <laughs> right. <laughs> that is very true. Uh, I'm always and forever will be Jairo Martinez. Uh, and we are your hosts. We love Metal Gear. Uh, I think that over the years we've grown to have a large, large number of hours played in Metal Gear. We've seen the fan base. Uh, we've we've been there online mm-hmm. and since the original Metal Gear Online. Right. Um, I've been playing. Yes, <laughs> I've been playing Metal Gear since about maybe two thousand four. Uh, what about you, Arnaldo? <clears throat> I guess, I, I don't know, I guess I rank it in by about, uh, I don't know, 1999. Nice. So as you can see, our knowledge in Metal Gear, um, you know, goes pretty back. We're not the biggest fans, let me just no, tell you. We're, we're not, not the biggest fans. We don't dress up, none of that. We just, we love Metal Gear. I have both my arms. <laughs> we just, we love Metal Gear so much, and we just wanted to start a podcast on it. With the recent events of Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain, which just came out September 1st, uh, we decided to just go ahead and talk about Metal Gear. Yeah, um, it seems like Metal Gear Solid Five has been receiving a lot of Tense. good and, and bad uh, from Metal Gear fans alike. Um, it's not even new people to the series. Metal Gear fans uh, cannot uh, agree whether it is a masterpiece. You have one group that says it is, and then you have another group that says it's the worst Metal Gear ever. Yeah. Um, we have our opinions about it, which we'll discuss later in the show, but, um, you know, I've seen across the board, IGN, Polygon, Game Informer, they all gave it high scores, 10 out of 10 on IGN, uh, which is a site I usually go on, but it's it's a masterpiece to them. And, and how Vince Ingenito said it in his um, his review was it's a masterpiece but it has a con in it which right. is uh, the lack of story lack of story right yeah, Big Boss no longer speaks as much as he used to he doesn't repeat things as much as he used to um, and it's just like uh, did we really need this game or could it could it have ended at Peace Walker right right I feel that, uh, you know, this is a large, large game. I mean, I think they had over $100 million, uh invested in this game, uh, yeah. aside from marketing, because it was $80 million for the game. That's how much they settled on. They didn't give them the full 100 I believe. Uh, I'm not sure, but I know the game cost about $80 million. That's how much Konami paid for this game. Right. So, uh, and then, surprisingly, which we'll talk about later in the show, David Hayter, not in this game. No, no, uh, we no longer get the raspy voice. <laughs> Metal Gear. Metal Gear. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we, we haven't gotten him uh, since Peace Walker, which was the last game he did. Right. And which he did great in, by the way. He does great in everything. But my man, Kiefer Sutherland, from 24, yeah. is in this. Where is the bomb? <laughs> Where's the bomb? <laughs> um... So you know, he didn't say that at all at this game. You know, but, he didn't say that, but he, but he said, "Damn it!" Like he did. Like, yeah, he did. He did. Yeah, yeah. Um. Anyway, so as you all know, or you probably you don't know, um, there's a lot of stuff going on with Konami. Uh, lots of things going on in their company over in Japan. Their, um, you know, their central offices. Yeah. We have a few news to go over, but. First of all, you know, we would just want to say we greatly appreciate you listening uh, right now. Uh, Of course, you know, we're starting out. This is something that, you know, we want to get out to the world. We feel like there's a lot of uh, podcasts out there, but not enough Metal Gear podcasts. Actually, there's only, I think there's only about one. Right. And they, uh, they were, they were pretty good at first, but they, they no longer bring out episodes. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully we can bring something with a little more consistency, especially when uh, Metal Gear Solid Five is always, always coming out with news at the beginning. You know, right? The, the things you guys skip. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> that's what. That's what we'll. Uh... That's what we're gonna dissect. Yeah. Pretty much, and just kind of give you the important things. Um, 
and so yeah it's it's just a constantly growing environment um and and we want to keep up with the times yeah uh metal gear online just came out in october uh which is a great iteration to the metal gear solid series it's the third iteration right. if i'm correct in that right. um metal gear solid 3 Mm-hmm. Metal Gear Solid Four now, Metal Gear Solid Five. Well, actually, you're forgetting if if you you're right. count them, the right. the, uh, the, the uh, PlayStation hand Portables. Yep, yep. yep. Uh, you're right. You know, uh, Peace Walker had one. Portable Ops. Yeah. Portable Ops Plus had Just... one, although they weren't, in my opinion, that good. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, they they had them. Yeah, I think that we there's a lot to cover. Uh, we definitely want to get this news out, um, and we just want to talk about talk about Metal Gear. All right, now time for the news. All right, so now we're going to get into a segment that we'd like to call the CB News, Cardboard News. Um, how many supply drops do we have? All right, so looks like we have four. Four supply drops. All right, bring them down. What do we got first? All right, first one. This, uh, this article came out uh, a few days ago. It's an update on Konami allegedly denies Kojima departure says staff on post launch vacation post launch vacation <laughs> this is hilarious because just a few weeks ago i mean well i mean a few months ago you know he decided he was going to leave uh konami and he did leave right this was something that we all knew was going to happen um probably after metal gear came out right. and it did right. but konami decides that no he's actually on a on a long vacation to the farm. <laughs> I, I, I guess they, they don't know how to fire him, or he doesn't know how to quit. What or he doesn't. Well, we don't know the take. We, we, but, don't, um, we don't know the take, yeah. Right. The New Yorker reports that a ceremony was held on that day with approximately 100 guests. So they're talking about that they had a celebration hmm. at the Konami headquarters or wherever Kojima Productions is. Um, and the publication also reports that Metal Gear Solid Five, the Phantom Pay, saw a revenue of 179 million at launch on September 1st. Wow. Uh, which indicates that they did amazing. Right. So this comes surprising to me just because Konami has no idea that supposedly that uh, Kojima has has left. Really? Right. I mean, d- weren't they the ones that said we're firing you? I don't think they've clearly stated that. I don't think they've ever stated that. But, um, and we're going to get into it with our fourth piece of the news that we just found out today. But um, we had, uh, I just feel like that they uh, they don't know where they're going. I mean, I know they're trying to make pachinko machines, which are the arcade machines with different games. They did talk about recently in an article states that, you know, they, they are working on a Metal Gear. That they're going to work on future Metal Gears. It's going to be bigger. Um, they're going to continue that saga, obviously without Kojima. Or do you think they've realized their mistake and they're just trying to get them back? Yeah, I I don't know the deal. Um, I mean, after they made after he made them that much money off of that one game, you know, it, it would be reckless to kind of let go of Kojima after that, no? Yeah, I mean, it's just it's very weird to me. Um, they they've actually provided a statement, so. Um, they were poorly de- report uh, that they denied Kojima's departure and claiming it knows nothing about a celebratory send-off detail in a New Yorker New Yorker's report. Report. Mm-hmm. While Konami declined to comment to us and other Western outlets, this is an article from Game Informer. It allegedly made a statement to Tokyo Sports. Kotaku translated the statement, which indicates that Kojima is still listed as an employee. And that he and other staff members are taking a vacation after the launch of Metal Gear Solid Five, The Phantom Pain. And it com- and its competitive component, Metal Gear Online, in response, Simon Parkin, who authored the New Yorker's uh, story, tweeted this picture, which is a picture of them celebrating inside the staff room. Wow. Yeah, Look you, at that. You, you can see them. He's celebrating inside, and it says, um, Simon Parkin, which is uh, from the New Yorker, uh, here's a photograph of... of Ko- uh, Kojima's farewell party on October 9th at Konami. Where, which, where, 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 where can we get that so uh, our listeners can see it for themselves? Uh, I'll like put it in the show notes. Right. I can put it in the show notes. Yeah, yeah, so definitely. We'll, I'll, we'll I'll definitely put, the put article. it down there. So thank you for, uh, I just want to give credit where credit is due. 
Um, Mike Futter from Game Informer, mm-hmm. uh, thank you for this article, which yeah. w- which broke. Which you did a very good job in, by the yeah. way. Very detailed, very uh, yeah, very well written. So um, that is that news. By the way, guys, you hear the train in the background. If you do, it's because yeah, that's uh, that's called the D train. Quite literally, <laughs> and we are uh, right by it, so don't mind it. It's uh, just a prop yeah. for our show. Yeah, it's it's included in the show. We need this train here. Yeah, we need <laughs> we need something. You know, it was like we, I, I I was just like we want a big presentation that's not too subtle but not too loud. Exactly, so <laughs> but not too loud. <laughs> we both looked at each other and said, "Train." Exactly. Yeah. All right. Uh, next one is a biggie. We have Metal Gear Online, uh, so you could talk to us a little bit about that. Right, yeah. I mean, it appears in the auto-matching that you will now be matched with players of similar level to the highest character level. Like, I, you know, how do you feel about that? Well, th- th- this is in regards to the update. So there's a new update coming out for right. Metal Gear Online, right. which is um, it's coming out November... November... I think it's November 10th. Is it? Not sure. Not sure. No, no, there's there's no date. There is a date. I just can't remember. It just it. says November. Scheduled for November. Scheduled for November. All right. That's all it says. There's there's there has to be a date out there. But yeah. um so this is in regards to the update, which is coming out uh later this month. I see this and then I think of uh you know, certain areas like Call of Duty, Halo, uh certain games where, you know, they match players to the best, you know, of their abilities. Whoever like let's say if you're ranked 1 through 10, they'll rank you from 1 through 10 in that update. Well, I mean, what it's saying here is that you're going to fight people that are the same level as you. Right, exactly. Right. And so, I mean, I don't know. I don't I don't like that. I mean, it's the leveling up in this isn't necessarily a big deal. It's just the weapons that you're given kind of a thing. Right. And the perks you have. And honestly, it's just like that, that you know, it could have a... Uh, it could either make you stumble or make you uh, become even better, but I, mm-hmm. I think you should just, you know, just uh, just randomly pick people who can be in different groups and uh, assign team members more fair, you know, in a fair like fashion, rather than deny them being able to play with certain people in an yeah. match. No, I, I I get what you're saying. Um, I think that in this game you're right about the the guns and the things that you do have. I think that's what really makes you in the game. Uh, I think that that's what utilizes each um, skill set is not really your level, but more of the weapons you have, the um, the what, components yeah. that you put inside. So, right, right. you know, as as me, <laughs> I play as an infiltrator. Right. So I have my stealth and I have my Fulton. Yeah, you should see the face he's making at me. <laughs> I make fun of him for using stealth. I tell he him does he not like using it. stealth. It but, makes uh, you weak. Oh my goodness. It's like go. using the scorpion in part three. People will know that whoever played MGO. <laughs> oh, classic. Taking it back. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So um, check, but check this out. Check okay. this out. If you if The second point here mm-hmm. in the auto matching, it says... It is now less likely to join a host with poor network connection. See, that I love. Yeah. Because, my goodness, I've had some trouble with this game. I mean, didn't they say they were going to have, like, individual servers? Whatever happened? They did. They said they were going to have dedicated servers, which which there are dedicated servers in okay. this game. Uh-huh. There, there uh, definitely is, because um, if anyone clearly remembers taking it back... Um, Metal Gear Online, the first one, didn't have dedicated servers, no, no. and yeah. we suffered for that. Right, right. Um, you remember how you how good it used to be to say, "I'm the host." I'm the host. Oh, I'm the host. Man, that was that, that was, was the like best. mission accomplished. And then it wouldn't let you if you didn't have a certain speed. Speed, or- yeah, 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 for sure. Right. Um, so, what what we're looking at right now is dedicated servers, and this just rings all bells to my ears because I've right. had certain problems with this game where mm-hmm. I'll get kicked out. Or uh, right. certain players will leave, so this is this is good. I'm I'm glad that they're putting this in. Right. Let's 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 keep going. Look, mission mission adju- uh, adjustments. This game, the game, sorry, will now end once all teammates are stunned or tranquilized in cloak and dagger. Finally, because it it drags on a little too long. Right. It does. It I does. mean, and you have to wait. Yeah. You and you're literally sitting there yeah. watching your teammates or whoever just. just right. 
stay there. And I've seen games where, you know, they'll hide. Because this game, it's it's it kind of demands you to hide and, and be stealthy. Even with your this game the stealth on, right. you know, they can if they're looking for you specifically, they can see you. Right, exactly. And you can only use non-lethal weapons. So yeah. I mean, it's just, you know. Absolutely. It's a little more difficult. But that that's good that they're rushing the game along. I mean, it's, it's kind of like watching Search and Destroy and... Call of Duty. It's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, Seek and Destroy. Yeah. Search and Destroy, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's right. right. Um, but that's good. But now we'll, we'll move on to loadouts, equipment, and adjustments. Um, the E-Locator mm. will now only be available for the Scout class. <laughs> Machine guns and launchers will now only be available for the Enforcer class. Shotguns will now only be available for the Infiltrator. Mm -hmm. As a result of these changes, custom loadouts will be initialized during the maintenance period following the update patch. Hmm. Hmm. What do you feel about the e-locator? Because I know that is your baby. Oh, man. That's, uh... That, that, that is the score racker. So, so you start off with three, am I correct? You do start off with three. Okay, so, so it's limiting, I think, it's set to two, right? Uh, well, actually, we, it, it, we didn't get to that part yet you're right you're right that's the knitting gritty yeah that's the knitting gritty right now it just says it'll only be available to the scouts but you're right they are going to limit it to only two they're not gonna allow you to uh bop mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh with the e-locators i've i've seen you play with the uh, with the scout class yes and it's uh it's interesting i i'm usually the stealth approach um, so I use stealth <laughs> all the time, all the time, which is something I feel comfortable with. Loser. <laughs> but here's the thing: I um, I enjoy it. But I've seen him play with the e-locator, and it's very helpful because um, you know certain times you don't know where your opponent is. Not only, but not only does it mark them, it uh, it gives the upper hand to your team, and when they kill them, it also gives you. Right, right. So at the end of the day, even if you don't kill the most people... Which I've seen you do. Right. Uh, you can still make first place. Yeah, you I've know? seen it. Yeah. Very, very uh, rare that it, a game is like that, but it's it's fun. Yeah. Especially in, um, in Bounty Hunter. It's, it's amazing how you can go from, you know, right. 28... Uh, to 15 and then get some fault in someone and then just be on the top yep. or tied. That, that's it. So. That's it. But, um, I mean, let, let's move on to the character abilities. Now. <laughs> this is the one. Overall movement speeds will be increased. Yeah. Mobility has been rebalanced to allow faster traveling between objectives. Yeah, I've noticed that the maps are fairly big. They're not in the medium range. They're not in the small or medium range. Although sometimes they, they do limit. They, yeah, they do. They, they do, But not, not when it comes to objectives like Cloak and Dagger. Or, right, right, exactly. Uh, you know, get the comms. Yep, yep. So it takes a while for you to get there. And then depending on your class, if you have a D class, you know, or, a, or you know, B or A or S, depending on your movement speed, um, it will take you a while to get to your opponents before you even... You know, get anywhere. So imagine you um, dying and then re dying and dying again, and you have to continue going and going, uh, trying to get to your next opponent. Right, right. Uh, it, it gets annoying when you keep spawning like that. Um, you know, it, so it, it'll be it'll be good to have kind of a balance. You know, uh, as Hydro had mentioned, I, I sometimes use a recon. Uh, my main guy's an infiltrator, by the way, guys. Don't don't knock me for it, but. Um, <laughs> When I do use the recon, the, the sniper rifle is so heavy, it makes you a D-class. Yeah. And the guy moves like, I don't know, like he has a hemorrhoid and he <laughs> it's irritating him. Uh, and speaking about the sniper. Him. Speaking about the sniper. The update. Oh, right, of course, let's go to that. Um, it appears that it won't sway as much. Oh, lovely. The scope. Lovely, you lovely. Know? Yeah, I mean, I, I have no idea. I'm like, why is he swaying so much? Like, what, Yeah. I you, think it's way too much. I think it's nervous. Seriously, it needs a penicillin. I mean, don't, these, don't these people go fast enough that you, you yeah, your your gun sways all over the place? Yeah, I think it's the most ridiculous sway I've seen in any game. Right, right. Even even more than a couple of games in which you can hold your breath. Right. Um, <laughs> but I mean, back back to the uh, the adjustments for the uh, for the characters. Um, it says infiltrators will have health and stamina decrease. Wow. 
Wow. So I, I don't, you know, I don't know much about. I, th- I thought they were perfectly balanced, honestly. Me too. Me I, too. You know, in terms, of, they're infiltrators. They're supposed to run right. Wa- you know, far distances, and it says they're gonna cut their stamina and their health. They already died fast enough. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's going on there? Um. See, this is a little upsetting to me, just because uh, you know I play as an infiltrator, but. Um, there's some, there's some positive to the infiltrator that's being added. I do like though, that as soon as you get shot or you get uh, found or something that your stealth now is, it's automatically is automatically turned off. turned off, which is great. It reminds me of a few games like that, uh, that I remember, uh, like in Halo or something like that. Uh, right. you know, as soon as you're, uh, you get shot or something, your you know, your cloak comes off. Right, so right. the health, man, it sucks. Cause we, as, as an infiltrator, they get shot really fast. Like they're, right. they're. You know they're I mean, dead. Their 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 weapons of retaliation aren't exactly, uh, you know, deemable in right. terms of like when it comes to this type of combat. They're they're more close quarters. Yep. So exactly. if they're being shot from far, it's like, uh, you know, you you really got to aim. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this is going to piss you off even more. <laughs> Enforcers will have health and stamina increase. That's beautiful because they, yeah, they're already they're already way monsters. Too. Yeah, as it is. And you're going to make them harder to kill. Yeah, it's a little hard just because I've seen some, you know, I'll I'll get a drop on a guy, I'll shoot him, and then uh, he'll kill me. He just has to turn around. And shoot. And shoot you. Once. And you might, yeah, you <laughs> might kill him, but he's going to kill you with him. Absolutely. Now, now check this out. This, is, this isn't this is bad. I, I, you know, I feel kind of neutral about this one. Okay. Scouts will have health increased. Scouts will be able to mark targets more quickly, which I think is good. That's good, yeah. That's it takes good. a while. It, it takes a while for even with the with the updated, um, you know, marking system. It it takes a while just for that thing to reach one hundred percent. Yeah, I, I think so too. So I I'm, I'm okay with that. Now let's go to weapons adjustments, since you know you kind of want to skip to these things. All right, and of of course, it, not only will it be the sniper that you won't swing mm-hmm. with anymore. Firing a uh, firing sway for machine guns will be reduced. Nice. nice. Weapon sway will be reduced overall when aiming in first person view. That's perfect. I mean, yeah. I barely use first person to be honest because I'm I usually like to shoot between the medium, shoulders. yeah, the shoulder uh, off the hip. So like between medium and and short range, mm-hmm. I like to shoot from there. I'm not really shooting from long range, but it does help when you want to uh, you know maybe provide covering fire or something. Right. Right. Well, now check this out. Check this one out. Damage inflicted by the Walker Gears Gatling gun will be reduced. Oof, lovely. That lovely. is a gift because <laughs> those things are way too overpowered. Well, I mean, I don't know how much of a lovely gift it'll be when the Enforcer's health is increased. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Walker Gears and anti-aircrafts will now take more damage from certain weapons. That's great. Um, I mean, certain. Sometimes I try to shoot at a Walker gear, and sometimes it'll uh, it'll take forever. Well, like I said, we we use infiltrators, so yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, okay, good. I, I wonder what these weapons will be. That's my question. Weapon damage of cer- uh, weapon damage of certain weapons are being adjusted for better balance. Damage value on the in in on is Nandu. RGL two two zero will be significantly reduced. I guess it's I guess it's probably a sniper weapon. I honestly I don't know. See guys, we don't know everything. <laughs> Reduce ammo count on that same RGL two two O max carry because mm-hmm. I don't hear here it is max carry for e locator stun grenades and sleep grenades will be reduced. You said it was like two, right? They'll give yeah. you two instead of three. Yeah, uh, I guess if you have the upgrade, it'll give you four instead of five. Right, right. Um, if the throwing arc of an empty magazine will be invisible to enemies. Yeah, so um, this one doesn't really relate to me, but I have seen um, one of my friends that I play with. He he throws a grenade uh, all. The, I mean, the magazines all the time. I have no. Idea. What is the point of that? Okay, I'm so like, th- this is what they do, right? They throw it, right, and then they hear the noise or whatever, and then they see the magazine, like they physically see it, the magazine being thrown, so they're like, oh, he's behind his duct, all right? Let's say if you're playing with a Turtle Beach headphones or some type of headphones and stuff, and you're relying on footsteps, you're relying on gunfire and all that to locate your enemies, right? So you say, okay, I'm playing with these headphones, 
you I throw this magazine to hit the vent or the door or etc and I see the magazine it makes no sense that I see the magazine where it's being thrown from because I know where you are right. you know what I'm saying right yeah. so it's gonna be like like the single player games like the campaign they can't see where it's being thrown right so you you throw it and all you see is the all you hear is the noise right and I mean I just don't understand the point of a magazine period and online that's just my personal opinion yeah, yeah, yeah. if you use magazines I mean feel free to email us and tell us how it's worked for you honestly I, I, I can't see how it's gonna go well um, the noise radius made by empty magazines when they land will be expanded hmm hmm interesting let's just move on to items adjustments <laughs> <laughs> Max carry amount of C-Box will be increased. Stealth Calmel adjustments, right? Stealth Calmel will be temporarily disabled. You already mentioned this right, while right. taking damage. Battery life will be reduced, and the battery will take longer to charge. Thank you, God. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes. Marking time for a cloaked player will be reduced. Uh, cloaked players detected by uh, night vision goggles will be marked in standard marking time. It's good. CQC adjustments. Range for CQC grabs will be narrowed. Yeah, literally. They can't I use was, the force anymore. They, they can't, can't because... They can't get you from like two I, miles away. I've had moments where I was literally maybe 10 feet away from someone and I will appear... You just go into their arms. Yeah, you just you just get a huge hug yeah. and then a judo throw. And they throw. just slam the crap out of you. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand how physically that could work. Well, you know, there's there's also the lag to... to oh, to of course, grab. but... You never you never really knew where he grabbed you, really. True, true, but if they're adjusting it, it's right. a problem. Right, right. But, well, no, of course, yeah. But the next one really excites me. Right, 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 which is that the icon for the CQC grab will no longer be displayed. So no more R2, no more RT when you see your opponent... Um, near you. Near you. So if he has stealth, it's not going to, you know... It's not going to show the button, so you're not actually going to know if he's there or not. Right, right. So, uh, Which the, helps me a lot. So, for example, you know, I was hiding. Right. And I I was there just proning, you know, just yeah. waiting, crouching. With this stealth camouflage. With my stealth camouflage, of yeah. course. Yeah. <laughs> and someone passes me, and he runs, but then he stops because he probably saw the marker. And I'm just like, crap. You know, like, I, w I was hiding there to get you, and then now, you know... You saw me because you saw the marker. Right. So this this actually, I like this. I actually like this. You know what? I don't know how I feel about this one right here. Check this out. Non-lethal damage done by CQC hits and grabs will be reduced. So, punches and all that. Punches and grabs. So that means if you grab them and you slam them, there's a chance he's going to get up. Hmm. I mean, I, Interesting. that kind of takes away from the whole Fultoning system. It does, it does. How do you knock them out and then knock them out again without being killed? Hmm. Well, for me, I like it in a sense where sometimes I'll get hit with one punch KO, which makes no sense. Because oh, the sucker punch. The sucker. No, 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 no. Not, not those. Not the sucker punch with uh, the Fulton. No, no. The sucker. You can do a sucker punch. Yeah, no, the Fulton. sucker punch. Right, right. Exactly. But you just, sometimes. You just tap our, uh, well, whichever trigger that enables it um, while you're behind the enemy twice, and it'll just sucker punch him. You're right. And. What I'm talking about is like a simple jab, like right? One of those jabs and stuff before right. he does his combo. Like I'll get knocked out by that, which well, sometimes, which will suck because it's like seriously, like one punch kills me. Really, I, 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 that's never happened to me. I'm so used to it's it. happened to me. And like, I've been kicked and I'll I'll still keep going. at you know. Oh yeah, no, and I'll hear it's that. Happened to me. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um. All right. So so check this out. So here we go. Yeah, I think this is more towards you. One hit CQC knockouts will be exclusive to infiltrators. With CQC stealth, uh, level two or higher. Yeah, love that. Beautiful. You know, I mean, think about it, guys. The infiltrator's doing like all of the work to try to get around, and uh, you know, for those who don't use stealth, it is uh, greatly appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Fulton adjustments. Fulton I like this one. I like this one. Fulton speeds when using Fulton level two or greater will be slowed. Yeah, man, I'd shoot. And these guys used to just get in the air and goodbye. Yeah, I mean, there's no chance for your teammates there's, to save you. I, well, and I'm an infiltrator, and when I'm shooting these things, it's just like, I I can't get there in time. Yeah, no, you can't. I So, so oh, by the way, so I try, I know we were having this conversation before, but um, in order to speak while you're getting Fulton, you got to click 
R one R T. I mean, no, no, I, I, I've managed to do it. Yeah, RB. you just, you just do the, the, the spe- yeah, 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 you do yeah, the yeah. speaking. Yeah, yeah. And, RB and, he, or, and he'll or, say, or you know, someone help me or whatever the case may be. Yeah, yeah. Um, get me up, help me up. Yeah, give I, me a hand, guys. Re- repeating it doesn't doesn't really help. It doesn't, doesn't really help. It yeah. doesn't it doesn't make us go faster. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad it's being slowed. Yeah, yep, I, I really am. When a player Fultons an enemy, the Fulton balloon and the enemy will be invincible to other teammates. Oh, I goodness. love that yes. because I've had people kill my targets while they were being Fultoned, and I'm it's just annoying, like guys. it is annoying. Okay, that's my point. You know, I could have saved the game, but you had to screw it up. <laughs> you had to screw it up. That's I'd rather someone get Fulton than killed, honestly. Really? Well, I mean, yeah. It, it It's all the benefit. It takes yeah. a little longer, but hey. Hey. All right? So, <clears throat> I mean, I don't think... Teamwork, anyone... guys. Teamwork. Well, not, it's funny that you mentioned that. We're going to get into the buddy system adjustments now. Nice. Um, not that anyone cares. <laughs> Time reduced to establish a buddy link using the link action will be shortened. You know, I, I, I could never... I never got it right, that that linking, the action. I mean, I've, right, I've, right. I've stood before them, and I've saluted like an idiot for like five seconds, and that just doesn't work. <laughs> I, don't, <clears throat> I don't know if I'm doing it wrong. But anyway, link actions will be will succeed regardless of direction of your character. Oh, the direction of the character is facing. Yeah, as long as you are in range, the buddy gauge will now clear at the beginning of each round. Right. So... Going back to the second point, um, which is the direction. So, buddy link system really does not work with people you don't know. I think that um, if you're playing with someone, it's a lot more helpful. But someone if you know. someone you know, right? Someone you know that you're in a party with, in a mm-hmm. chat room with, or you know, you have a mic on and stuff. Because um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You know, yeah, you can see your buddy getting killed over there, but um, if you're not really communicating with him, you know, then it's not really a good point, you know? Oh, yeah. But um, the benefit is that, you know, now from any direction you can do it. So let's say right. if you guys are <clears throat> facing the opposite side of each other, trying to cover each other's back, and they say, oh, wait, we have a buddy linked. Just right. salute real right. quick, well, and you guys are linked. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. <clears throat> I mean, don't get me wrong. The buddy link is is helpful. It is I've, helpful. I've, I've managed to save my buddy from being Fulton. Because yeah, I know yeah, and that's, that's where the big help comes in. Right, right. I know that he's being grabbed. I've, I've also been saved uh, being Fultoned. Um, by a buddy. Not too often, though. I'm usually the guy saving. You jerks. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but other than that, um, let's just get into the other adjustments. Search filters, if you use that when you select a match, will now be saved. Countdown time on the spawn screen has been extended from 10 seconds to 15 seconds. Yeah, which is great, just because... I mean, I have my other issues in the beginning of the match, but during the spawn sequence, let's say if I do want to switch my weapon or something, it doesn't give you enough time. You mean your loadout? Yeah, the loadout. Oh, okay, right, right. Mm-hmm. So, guys, you know, I mean, we've we've read this directly from Konami. Yeah, um, we're not making any of this stuff up. Uh, just note that, you know, the patch still works. All the works are still in progress. Um, some diff- Some changes might differ. Uh, in the update, uh, and uh, final changes might change. Um, uh, but with that, let's just move on to the next supply drop. Uh, Heidel, what else do we have? All right, so the next one we have here is, uh, I'll tell you right now. All right, it's talking about numbers, 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 which is what everyone cares about. <laughs> it seems that every company wants to care about numbers and sell and this and stuff you know every company releases how much they sold and everything metal gear solid 5 to phantom pain has shipped over 5 million copies 5 million copies it's great i think this is a, a great thing for them um i'm not happy with their publisher but i am happy with uh kojima and his team i think they've done a phenomenal job with this game um, in, a, in a Game Informer article, uh, it reads, in quote, uh, in its half-year financial briefing, Konami disclosed that it has now shipped 5 million copies of Metagear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. This is inclusive to digitally sold copies, pushing Konami's gaming business sales and profits significantly ahead of last year. So, this does not count um, 
digital sold games, hmm. which a lot of people, people have downloaded. Have, I'm yeah, assuming a yeah. lot. So uh, revenue grew seventeen point five percent to uh, five fifty one point seven billion of uh, yenis, which is four hundred twenty seven point six million. And segment profit jumped from seventy one point six percent. Hmm. Um, Konami corporate wide operating profits nearly doubled from its point last year with net gains more than twice in the fiscal year 2015 um, that's a great way I mean it's great for Konami yeah honestly yeah um, I think right now they seem like the bad guy right now they're right. more of uh, you know the kind of like the bad company you know they've uh like like we were stating before, you know, there's there's a lot of things that are going on over there in Japan. Um, not many people know this, but Konami, they as Americans in the West, we know them more as a gaming company. We they, know them only as a gaming company. That's really. the only way we know them. I didn't know any anything else besides Konami. Right. So they've made games. Um, they had something called Ultra back in the day because they released way too many games back then. So um, you know, for Metal Gear Solid fans back there. You know, the first original Metal Gear um, had to be under Ultra. In the cover uh, of Metal Gear, it has no Konami logo <laughs> right, on it, on right. the cover. When we, say, when we say Metal Gear, we're, we're talking about the NES one. The yeah. uh, first Metal Gear uh, does not say Konami on it. It says Ultra. It says Ultra, and that's because they made so many games that Nintendo put a cap on <laughs> on making these games. Right, right. Okay. You know, Um but this is, and we've only known them as a gaming company, right? Either right. Either Ultra right. or Konami. In Japan, they're different. It's a, uh, it's not just a gaming company. They're, they make gyms. They have water. They have vending machines. They make different accessories. It's like a huge Walmart over there. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. it's a it's a very different company. Um, so they their hands are in a lot of uh people in 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 Japan over there. Yeah, they have a lot of influence, I see. Yeah, they do. I think that that's, that's great, you know, that they do a lot of things aside from gaming. Um, but lots of shady stuff going on over there. Right, right. I mean, over here we only see, the, like, the tip of the iceberg. We now know that Kojima is no longer part, or is he, as from what we've spoken. Right, yeah. We don't even know if he's on vacation or whatever. It's, apparently, uh, we also heard a story that because Konami can't fire Kojima's workers, or the workers that were part of Kojima's team, didn't they like relocate them to like really bad jobs? Well, I think it, it just wasn't. It wasn't just uh, Kojima Productions. It was Konami in itself, all hmm. of Konami. This, so they they relocate them to like really bad. Well, this is this is. Uh, it's not rumored. It's it's something that was said by an employee over there. Uh -huh. So it was given a statement to Kotaku. Um, talking about, you know, whether that all these CEOs and um, whatever bosses, managers, all these higher ups uh, were giving other jobs like janitorial jobs, right. you know, cleaning jobs. Right, and they're sticking around too. Yeah. Um, our last piece of news for today. Um, story just broke today, so this one is um. This one kind of sucks because um, it just happened, one, and also because it's it greatly impacts us here as a uh, as in you know American. Konami confirms closure of Kojima Productions Los Angeles studio. Mm. If you didn't know, these are the people in charge of the Metal Gear Online. They're the ones that made Metal Gear Solid Online, and. They're the ones who, uh, you know, made all the efforts and spent all that time making Metal Gear Solid online. It's the reason we enjoy it today, pretty much, the um, online portion. Right. Uh, Konami has made a statement, uh, quote, Konami has made a decision to close its Los Angeles studio effective immediately due to the product development resources being restructured into a more centralized unit, end quote. Uh, Konami said, quote, this facility contributed to the recent Metal Gear Solid games. Konami will continue its operations to support all Metal Gear Solid title, titles, including the recently uh, uh, launched Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain and Metal Gear Solid Online, 
Metal Gear Online is still scheduled to release for PC, Steam in January 2016, end quote. Um, that was provided uh, by Konami. Um, and man, this is uh, this is this is tough. Yeah, it's, it seems like they're burning a lot of bridges here. Yeah, I, I feel bad for uh, you know families, and uh, you know my heart goes out to them. Right, the right. Uh, I, I know you you probably worked very very hard. Uh, so I mean, good luck to you. I hope I hope other companies take you in, or actually that they uh, change their minds. Yeah. Um, you know, also, if you didn't know, they, uh, uh, Kojima Productions LA, they opened uh, last year, oh, two years ago, in 2013, after a public recruitment campaign. The studio worked on Metal Gear Solid 5 and its competitive multiplayer component, Metal Gear Solid Online. I think they opened, they, uh, they had their offices removed to Los Angeles last year, September or something. Hmm. Which is nuts to me that a studio will close, you know, this early in in their cycle. How do you feel about I, this? I mean, hey, man, um, you can't kill Metal Gear, and uh, nope. And I, I think the fans will speak for themselves when they say that Metal Gear Online has to continue. I mean, right? Uh, it might not be everyone's favorite online component. But it's it's hella fun. Yeah. So um, I mean, let's just uh, let's stay strong on this one. But um, man, uh, I really hope that there's a change in uh, what the company believes they should do, um, and see where the investment is is, is going really well. Uh, I, I I think they'll change their mind. I think they won't uh, they won't go through with it. Yeah, yeah. I uh, my fear is that what would happen next? Like who? You know, there's this new patch coming out that we just spoke about. Right. Um, who are going to de- do these patches? Are Is Konami's internal team going to do it? or As a matter of fact, who's going to come up with future patches? That's, right. That's, you yeah. know, I mean, it's this isn't going to make the game perfect, as you see. Um, yeah, uh, As absolutely. I read, it might, it might be, it might be, it might differ uh, f- mm-hmm. from what it actually says. It might not work too well or whatever. This is all, for honestly, uh, the online portion so far has been a beta, in my opinion. I mean, you don't have many levels you don't have many options so i mean for right now i just i just think they're really testing the waters and uh i mean they got to think smart yeah absolutely absolutely i i just i see how there there's a lot that goes on to this um you know a lot of people affected by this uh yeah well that wraps up the news for uh for this episode yeah this was our uh, first news segment uh we promise we'll make it better. <laughs> yeah, this is our first episode. Um, you know, we, we really, honestly, again, thank you for uh, for listening. We do, we do. We don't even know why you're downloading it, but but thank <laughs> we you. We don't know, honestly. We don't know, but <laughs> but you'll let us know how we do. Uh, we'll we'll take constructive criticism. Uh, no trolls, please. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the next segment I wanted to speak about our topic of the day, which is uh, Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. So we're actually getting into the game now. We're actually going to talk about stories, opinions, uh, you know, uh, what we think. Without spoiling just, anything. Yeah, of course. Of course, we will be merciful, although the game has been out for a while, guys. Beat you, the game. Yeah, if you haven't beaten the game, come on. <laughs> yeah, um, it is a long game, though. Actually, you know what? I'm going to spoil the ending. I'm going to do it. I'm going to spoil <laughs> the ending. <laughs> I'm going to do it. This is what happens. The credits roll. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Oh, I didn't say that. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, okay. Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. This is Kojima's last game. Or so day. we think. Right. Because he, he says that all the time. Every game he said it. He said it. This will be my last game. Yeah. Right. He said it in one. He said it in two. He said it in three. And he definitely said it in four. He said it in Peace Walker as well. He did say in Peace Walker, right, actually. He did. He's like, this is my last game. All right. So I want to talk about gameplay. Yeah. Gameplay is amazing. I love it. I think it's the best in the series. I actually agree with you, man. Um, I think it's it's the best gameplay MGS has ever seen. I'm yeah. not the only one to say it. I uh, this is. I think this is the one thing. I think this is the one thing that all the players can agree on. That the gameplay is superb. Yeah, yeah. I have uh, 
a strong admiration for what Kojima and his team um, have done for this game. They, I think they took what was already great gameplay, um, in my sense, uh, and they took it to a whole new level. It was just like something that I've never seen before. It's so fluid. It's Metal Gear. <laughs> uh, well, it definitely, definitely, man. It's just, uh, you, you don't feel limited. Right. You don't right, feel limited right. in what you can do, what you can climb. The tools that the, you have. The tools that you have, the things you can explode, the things you can break. <laughs> I I especially love the uh, the transitions. So before there was kind of a menu screen in which, you know, you had to pause the game. Pretty much it was like a second pause screen. You hold R2, you hold L2 to kind of uh, go to, you know, your items. Through your, your weapons, right? It right. Would, it would pause the game. It would pause the game. You know, yeah. this one is just the D-pad up yep. and down and that's it. You have everything in there. Yeah. And what I love about it is that you hold you, you know, you uh, hard press on like the up button and then you get another selection of right. of things. Right. You know, I, I love that, man. I absolutely think that it's one of the best. The aiming is great. It has the same aiming as part four, you know, with over the shoulders right, of uh, course. shooting. Of course. But I think they took it to a, the next level where... Um, I think new players can adapt to it, and old players can find some similarities in it. Well, yeah, yeah, they, they'll definitely have a familiar feeling to it. I yeah. mean, uh, a lot of games have started uh, with the whole um, third-person view in mm -hmm. terms of aiming. I think it first started in Gears of War, right? Uh, right. where it was like first like made something, it, it was just a big thing. Yeah. And so uh, we see in Metal Gear that it's, it's just been refined and, and Absolutely. It's a lot smoother. Uh, but definitely, man, I, I agree with you there. Um, I also uh, just enjoy how much freedom you have in terms of you you get to approach each mission the way that you want to. Yeah. You can either go in loud, go in quiet, which uh, I believe veterans of Metal Gear are just stuck yeah. on that one. They just they they just, inst just your instincts are just sneak, don't kill. Because you'll get in trouble. Yeah. And uh, but you don't have to do that this time. No, you don't. You it's okay to kill in this game. I think before there was a penalty for killing or you know certain things, but I've seen people kill. I I've done it. I've killed and I've gotten an S rank. Right. Right. No. Yes. Um, uh, believe it or not, I think I think uh, this is in my experience uh, to earn an S rank. Really, it's it's really based upon the speed in which you do the mission. Tips with Arnaldo. Tips with Arnaldo, <laughs> not from an expert. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, it's really just in the speed that you do it. It's, it's. I mean, if you don't get caught and and whatever the case may be, even better. But uh, yeah, man, getting an S rank in this game is easy to say the least. Yeah, I think that there is a lot of difference in from let's say like the core game, which was Metal Gear Solid Two changing the uh you know the gameplay a little bit and refining it um but that same kind of feel of Metal Gear solid one where you know you're infiltrating and you're sneaking around and stuff i love that you can just go whichever way you want um i can think of many different scenarios that has happened whether i get dropped off i i get my d-dog and i'm running to the mission i'm running 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 and then i get to the place and i figure out okay how am i gonna get this you know, I'll take out my binoculars or my D-Dog, which is the best buddy in the game. <laughs> right, right. Um, okay. In my opinion. I think that, uh, you know, scouting with him, uh, making sure that I know everywhere where my enemy is. I think knowing where your enemy is is super key to this game. Just if you if you want to be an infiltrator. If you want to go in guns blazing, then go in guns blazing. But um, mm -hmm. I really enjoy that aspect of it. I think it's the best Metal Gear gameplay I've ever seen. Right, right. I mean... I you really get to set your difficulty here. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, you know, for people who just want to go in, uh, kind of sneak in, but want the challenge. Maybe, it's a little harder. Maybe yeah. they don't bring D Dog. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Don't bring D Dog. Just use your. E even then, you have your 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 bionic arm to yeah, uh, yeah. kind of that. scout yeah. the area. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, you kind of just control how easy. For instance, you know. Nowadays, uh, for people who have been playing it for a while, they got like the tranquilizer sniper rifle. You could just snipe people from afar, capture an outpost, and that's it. You're done. Um, yeah, yeah. A lot of people prefer to go in and uh, do it themselves. I know. I know from time to time, in order for it not to be 
uh, tedious for me or repetitive, I, I'll put away the sniper and uh, I'll just sneak in old fashioned OSP style, which is my favorite mode there. Right. Uh, when they allow when you when they give you the missions OSP. The sneaks, yep. Uh yes. Go which, on sneaky. Yeah, yeah, which pretty me pretty much means they, they send you in without nothing. A cure on site. Right. Um weaponry, everything. You go in with nothing but yourself. Yeah. And aside from the main missions, the side ops I think the side ops are really fun. They have they bring creativity, uh they bring a lot of similarities to like a lot of the same missions but <laughs> overall i think it's 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 a very fun intuitive uh you know part of the game yeah i mean, I mean the first time you do certain missions it's uh it's great you know it's a great time to it's a great way right. to uh pass the time uh get extra gmp which is the uh, currency in the game um you know get uh blueprints developments uh, developers um, for certain items, certain weapons. Yeah, and and the fun part about it is that you can get just you just can drop in to any side op and go to the next one in the same you know same run. Right. No no loading no loading required. That's amazing. Uh yeah. I mean I, I mean it, it's the new age of open world. Yeah. Uh, you know now now I will say this because I have to say this, it does get tedious. Yeah, it does repeat itself continuously. You're doing the same thing, you know. Um, unlucky dog one to like unlucky dog twenty, yeah, or it's, something. It's and it's 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 basically the same concept. Wandering soldier, <laughs> right? B same concept, just different location. You know, might be a little harder. I think that to kind of interject there, I think that maybe Kojima was probably trying to see. Hey, do this mission differently. Now do this one differently. Now this one differently. Because you can't go back inside inside ops. Right, right. I mean, I, that would make so much sense if there were like three. But there's like ten. You're right. There's like so many. Same yeah. Thing. No, I mean, and I, I think you're right about that. I think that there are, there are a lot of tedious missions that's like literally one through twenty. Seriously. But um, I think it's pretty fun, man. If, if you're not just playing the missions, you know, and... You're just in there uh, just to 100% the game um, or just to have fun. I think the startups are a pretty good time to just chill out and not go through the vigorous missions and, you know, stressing out about those. You can just sit back. You know, it could take five minutes, could take 20. I mean, it definitely it definitely extends the life of the game because you could just stop whatever main story you're doing, do some side ops, which, you know, you'd be... Next to you know you've done like fifteen of them, you don't even realize it. <laughs> That's true. And yeah. uh you 157 know, side ops. 157 side ops. Which in reality, if you boil it down, if we do like one per you know, one per side op uh, in the sense, it would be uh, it would probably be a lot less. It would be, yeah, probably, probably be like, like 50, 50, 50, I think. Really? Yeah, 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 I think so. Because there's only so much you do. I mean uh, take care of the heavy infantry. Uh, right, with the tanks, and then they right, add a right. helicopter and two tanks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, take out, uh, take out the wandering soldier. Bring him back. Yeah. Uh, unlucky dog. Uh, one of your teammates was trying to retrieve a prisoner and got caught himself. So it it's just like if you if you go through all of them, or or the lost sheep. Yeah, yeah. Or clearing up the mines. The mines, yeah. You know, it, it, I like to clearing up the mines though, because I literally have to do nothing and crawl on the floor. <laughs> it's great. I, I mean, all you got to do is really bring D Dog, and he tells you where they are. Yeah, sniff them out, and that's it. That's it. Hey, you know, um, but yeah, man. Uh, I really, I did enjoy the side ops though. I'm, yeah, yeah. I won't, I won't lie, but I did notice that. I can't, I can't overlook it. I can't say that. After a while, I didn't say, "Wow, another one." You know, another one of the same yeah, thing. Yeah. I so. think some of some of the listeners might agree with you. Yeah. Um, in that sense. Right. Um, so up to this point, how many side ops have you completed? I honestly, I, I can't count. I know. I'm, so you can't count. So you haven't been to school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Of course. Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you, and I and I think a lot of you would agree with me. I haven't done any of the target practice. In in in, <laughs> in uh, mother base, I haven't Those done. Any, I haven't done any of them. 
I just I, maybe not because it's hard. I just I don't know. Try them. They're hard. I don't know. I just just I don't find it entertaining to shoot at targets. It's not. But then again, it's so easy in a sense. Like it's so attainable. Like it's right there for you. Right. Right. You know? right but open. I did try it. Um, and the first few ones are easy. Now the part that it does get hard, and these are tips, is when you go into. Um, if I can remember, there's a few in a few bases that it's hard to find the targets. Right. They're just hard to find, man. Like they're in like the smallest crawl space ever. Like you'd never think to look there. Right, right. It reminds me of, of VR missions. Right. I mean, I mean, and I guess that's that's their like challenge port of VR yeah, missions. Yeah. But oh, now that you're mentioning VR missions, kind of miss them now that you mention them. You're right. Uh, but that's beyond the point. But yes, man. Um. You know, those are the only side ops I haven't done. I've done a ton of other ones, though. Uh, I've retrieved so many people and so many tanks. and uh, yeah. So it's just kind of like you want it to end, but at the same time, you don't want it to end. And, you know, I'm still trying to do the, the extra objectives in the main uh, missions, uh, even though I've completed the game. Yeah, yeah. I think that there's a lot of you know, different things you can try because without it, um, I think the game will be a little, little, you know, a little scarce. Right, right. For instance, um, if you play the, uh, the mission in which you have to rescue Kaz, do you remember that? Right. If you look at the objectives, it makes you do some crazy things. Like you have to go the long way around mm -hmm. and you have to get a commander at this base and, and X and Y, since you'll have Fultons. So it, it they, they give you like six objectives, and you can complete them all, and then do the mission. And it'll feel like an entirely different mission, but just with the same end. Yeah, yeah. Um, and another point to bring up with, this, with um, some of the side ops is, I think that in regards to having different set points inside, like going to Afghanistan or Africa... Um, I think it makes you explore each part of each, um, you know, I guess, uh, location inside a huge map of Africa and, and Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. You know, there's certain blue point, uh, blueprints and uh, cassette tapes that maybe people can't get, but they do find it during the side ops. Mm -hmm. I think that's fun. I think that's a, that's a good way instead of just grinding to go to the same mission. Mm -hmm. I think that's another good way to do it. Right, right. Just clearing out the, uh, the places and finding things you missed mm -hmm, during mm -hmm. the main ops or mm -hmm. you just didn't look for right right um i want to get into the missions the uh, actual story the actual story right okay yeah okay um there's 50 50 or 51 i can't remember it's not 51 uh, so it's just 50. 52 I believe. 52 okay 52? so 52 yeah i'm sorry if that's wrong <laughs> yeah if, if we're wrong by all means just call us on it it's fine <laughs> Anyway, uh, we have those missions available to us. Certain missions are available right from the get. As soon as you start the game, there's maybe two or three that are available to you that you can go and choose. After that, missions start opening up like wildfire. Right, right. Um, so now, there's different points in the game, without spoiling anything, there's different points in the game where there are consequences and you can't go back to them. Yeah, and then there are certain scenes that get activated by certain actions. Right. And can, But those can also be... Uh, I don't want to use avoided because it, it means that they're always bad. They're not They're not bad. It's just... It, it might just not happen in your game. Um, yeah. Because of an action you did or an action you did not do. Right. Absolutely. Um, I think most people know this and it's probably not too much of a spoiler, but you could go throughout the whole game without, without D-Dog. You can also go throughout the whole game without Quiet. Yeah. You know, some missions can go on without her, and you'll be totally fine. And the game will go on just like that. Right, right. But you know, um, and this is not a spoiler alert, but if you don't have her, you'll be skipping a huge part of the story. Go get her, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, Capture her. Don't, don't, yeah, don't kill her. Don't kill her. <laughs> um, it's worth it. Yeah. Um, okay. This is my opinion of Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. I think it's 
one of the best games to come out in this generation. I think it's I think it's one of the best uh, shooters and stealth action game uh, to ever come out. I don't think it's the best Metal Gear. I think it's because of the story. Um, I don't play Metal Gear for the gameplay, in my personal opinion. I think a lot of fans would agree. I don't play Metal Gear because I want to shoot things and I want to um, stealth camouflage everywhere and uh, CQC everyone, although that is a very fun part of the game. I play Metal Gear because of the story, because I am involved in it mentally. I grew up with it as a kid playing it. I I am just in it. It's it's very complicated, but as Metal Gear fans would say, you know, it's it's not that hard to understand it. You know, when you play all the games and you're so involved in it. I think it's um it's a really step down in the story. I don't know whether that was because of Konami's input, Kojima's time in it. I don't know whether it was Kojima's um you know doing but the fact that you change the main character's voice and not have him speak as much is very fishy to me you know i i very much think that uh kojima had to do with this only because if you uh if you look at the every single mission every single mission what do you see in in the credit lines it's directed and produced by Hideo Kojima. Yeah, right. You wouldn't put your name on something if you didn't want it out. So I think, man, I, I just think uh, Kojima was okay with this work. He approved it, uh, and he shipped it out just as just like it was. But if we remember, they didn't. Uh, we we spoke about this earlier. They didn't have the budget they wanted, so the the game. Yeah was cut short. Uh, that's not a spoiler. But he did he did get get uh over budgeted for the game. Like he went over budget with this game. Right, right. But they only went so far. He wanted one hundred yeah. million, they only gave him eighty. Yeah. Uh eighty for the game and I think a hundred and then like the rest were for marketing. Right, right, right. So I mean so the game I guess what Heidel is saying is that the the game leaves you wanting yeah, um, absolutely. I, I feel the same way. It's, it's kind of like the way that it ended. You're kind of like you're sitting on the couch or wherever you are, laying in bed, however you play, and you're just like you see the ending, and you're just like, "That's it." Yeah, I was. I was not only because of the ending. I was just. I don't know about choosing each mission and going into each mission and choosing how you want to play. That's just not Metal Gear to me. Metal Gear is about being inside and surviving. You know, Metal Gear Solid 1, you get you go into this base in Alaska and you have to survive the cold. You have to fight all these amazing, memorable bosses and you have to pretty much get from point A all the way to point B, which is Metal Gear. Right, right. Well, I mean, think about it like this, man. Think, think, think like this. Every Metal Gear, in a sense, is open world. You you do have it point A and point B, but how you get there is however you want. You know you can you can you can choose to kill. You can choose to not kill. You can go up the up upper uh, venting ventilation. Yeah, yeah or the, the bottom the, one, the lower ventilation. So I mean, it, it's it, Metal Gear has always been about options about how you go in. I mean, I think MGS five just open that up so much more. You know what I mean? It it didn't it didn't do anything it wasn't doing before. It just opened it up a lot. You know? Uh, yeah, but then like where are the awesome memorable bosses? Where are the awesome cutscenes where, you know, you get in there and you're just man, you're ready to fight that boss. The screen turns white, it flashes white and you're just ready to fight. You know, I don't think there was a lot of that. You know, the only fight that I saw that was pretty good was Quiet. I think that was a decent fight. I don't think that was the best. I think that uh, the end in Metal Gear Solid 3 was the best boss fight in Metal Gear history. That's just my opinion, of course, but 
I just think that the story was just laid out in a way where, where yeah, I guess the players choose to do, you know, whatever they please. But I want to hear Kojima's story. I'm not a mastermind. <laughs> I'm not, you know, a creator in the sense of story in a game. I'm just a gamer. <clears throat> and I got invested into Metal Gear Solid because of the creator. Because Hideo Kojima made such a memorable game, Metal Gear Solid 1. Um... And then followed by two, you know, I think those characters and memorable moments in Metal Gear Solid, like, I think of Metal Gear Solid 3 going up the stairs for, like, five minutes. The ladder. And, uh, sorry, the ladder. You know, that's amazing to me. Like, I remember that. And that was just, like, he couldn't have done that. But that was there for a reason, you know? And I loved it. I loved every moment of it. You know, you had to survive in this jungle. In this game, you get dropped. And you come back, there's no really sense of surviving. Where's my torture scene? Where's my, you know, my uh, moment of, of of failure and I gotta come back to, to get him? You know, like when you failed getting Vulgan and you had to come back, spoiler alert. <laughs> I mean, you guys, come on, you guys gotta play Medical Solid 3 by now. But, you know, where's where's the moment where, you know, I'm I'm dropped in here and I have to survive? I have to find my way, find my weapons, first of all, because you have everything on you now. I understand the game is different. I just didn't feel like this was Metal Gear. I think this is more geared, geared to money-making, if I'm honest. I feel like this, this is a game where it appeals to all audiences, and they just wanted to make money with this game. They didn't really do what Metal Gear Solid 4 did, which is a fan service. Well... Uh, th those are those are pretty good points. Um, I, I I don't think Hideo went the way that he wanted to. I think he was limited by a lot of things. Konami, you know, for instance, uh, you know, Keith. Uh, well, I can't even say his name. Give me a minute, Keith Sutherland. <laughs> Sutherland. Sutherland. There you go. He was the voice of of Big Boss and. I mean, just to pay that guy to... Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, yeah. forget about it. I, I really don't... You know, they can say that Big Boss's character is a lot more broody and he doesn't say much, but can you imagine if if Hideo had the budget that he wanted, um, how many times Keither would speak, would actually talk? Mm, yeah, maybe, yeah. You but... know, and give more debt mm -hmm. to the character. Um... You know, because it feels like everyone else is talking, and Big Boss just nods or just says right, right. something short, yes or of course. You know, it's, it's you go you go pretty much throughout the same dialogue in the entire game. Once you hold someone up, you can tell them where are your friends, uh, <laughs> get down, uh, speak. You know, that that's just pretty much you get from him. And it, yeah, you know, it's it's not much dialogue, and I and I get that. Um, now, I mean, in terms in terms of the the boss fights, I I will tell you one thing. Uh, maybe they weren't as theatrical. They're, yeah. they're, they weren't as theatrical as as the other games. They, like you know, Batman. The, <laughs> the other games made a big deal. Uh, the epic music in the background, you know, like you you feel like you're against time. Uh, in a boss fight with like, like with quiet let's say it was pretty quiet it, it was as the name implies uh you just unless you mark her you you know um you don't know where she's coming from and even then she could just disappear uh and then she's gone again it, it you know it's i i like i like the idea behind it i like you know it wasn't what we're used to uh like facing vamp or something like that um, but man, it, for instance, if you played, and, and this might be a little spoiler, but if you played, um, uh, what's his name? Code Talker in Extreme, where he, they send four skull snipers at you. <laughs> Good luck. It's hard. You'll, you'll feel the pressure there. Yeah, I, obviously, I'm not really necessarily talking about hard moments. I'm talking about the memorable moments. Right. Well, I mean, you mentioned something about feeling the pressure, feeling 
feeling like there's no escape, feeling like right, right. you yeah, have to yeah. survive. That's what right. I'm saying. But I can leave that mission anytime I want. Well, if you could get out of there, sure. You know? Yeah, well, yeah. I, but there's the option. Right, right. There's there's the option to do that. It's it's uh but it's not avoidable if you don't go through it. You either have to sneak by them or take them all out. And taking yeah. them out is not It's not an easy task, you're right. In, even on normal, you know, it was it was right. it was a very hard mission. Just imagine four quiets at the same time. Yeah, it's extremely hard, right? I'm just talking about moments where man, you know, like just those special Metal Gear moments. You know, Metal Gear Solid 2 had so many of them. You know, just sneaking past the Marines playing as Snake in the back. And then they're shifting left and right. And, you know, look to the left, look to the right. Man, like that. I remember stuff like that. Like, you mean this, like tension? Yeah, tension, right? And then look to the left, right? Look to the right. No, no, no tension. You felt tension. Oh, oh, yeah, the tension, the tension, yeah. Like, Not a tension. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just felt like, man, you know, where were those moments? Like, I was waaiting for, I mean, I'm not going to spoil this one, but I was waiting for that special moment where I was going to see a certain character. That didn't happen, <laughs> you know? Um, you know, I was waiting for the epic finale and, and, like, to tie it all together. It just didn't happen, you know? Like, I, man, this was the perfect opportunity to, to, to bridge... Metal Gear One, which many fans that played Metal Gear Solid have not have not played, and and I'm pretty sure there's a statistic out there where it says you know not many Metal Gear players have played the originals, you know unless you're like a mega fan you know and you really want to play it or you probably played it when you were a kid or something, but like I've played those games and I love those games, you know they weren't obviously mem memorable or anything like that or like great, but like. The Gray Fox fight in the, the ninja fight, you know, in, in Metal Gear. Amazing. In the land field, you know, like that. The mind field. The mind field, sorry. The mind field. Like, it was it was great, you know. Mm -hmm. And Metal Gear 1, there's a bridge that is, is, is not connecting there between Phantom Pain and Metal Gear 1, which they could have literally, that was, a, that was an alley-oop. Man, well, I was, mean, like I said, I, it's, we said this before. Hideo said it's his last game. It might not be. Even though, I mean, we know what happens. We know where Metal Gear starts off. You know? Um, we know about David, a.k.a. Solid Snake. We know we know about these things. It's, it's not hidden. Um, the only thing that, that kind of caught me by surprise was Big Boss in Phantom Pain. That's what caught me by surprise. Yeah, I caught, I caught it caught me by but, surprise. But you see, that's the loop that it fixes. Now, now it makes sense. Now you know how... Right, right, right. But, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we won't get into that as much, but you're right. You're absolutely right. It did fix that. It was just disappointing. Right. Well, I mean, you and I have talked to the, talked about this before. Yeah, and, yeah. And I, and I had told you, um, I think it's because you you put too much expectation. I did. In the, I did. I'll, I'll did. tell you something about Heidel. Uh, when he <laughs> when there's a game coming, when there's a Metal Gear game coming out, he watches every IGN, literally every uh, reads every article, uh, every single thing. And so when Metal Gear Solid Four came out, I was not sleep. It said it was coming out uh, five a.m. Eastern time, right? And I was in my computer pressing refresh every like second. Right. So you clearly see how much of a loser he is. But the point <laughs> is, is, you know, I told him when he played part five after it had been hyped up so much, I didn't do so much research myself. I didn't, I, I just waited for the game as a fan. Um, I just think his, his hype was so built up. And it, 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 was, was, it was, it was, it was just dropped. Me, honestly, I enjoyed the ride. I just, I just enjoyed the ride. Um, do I think the, the story lacked? Yes. Uh, did I enjoy it? Yes. I enjoyed it. Um, did I accept it for what it was? Yes. Um, could we have gone without this game? Yes. Uh, am I glad it was me? Yes. Uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to ask you a question then. In a review score from uh, 1 through 10, what do you review the game in? What, what's your score? Honestly, given to account the the fun that I had, because I'm no pro scorer, I would give it. It's it's tough. It's either an eight. Yeah, or, we're not re we're not reviewers. We're not editors. This right, is right. Just our opinion. I th I think I would either either give it an eight. 
mm-hmm. or a 7.5 just because of the story, just because it lacked yeah. that. And yeah, I mean, but everything else I enjoyed. I thought yeah, it was yeah. it was well done. Um, I even didn't mind the repetitive helicopter scene in the beginning. <laughs> you know, I, I thought it added to it. Which most people, uh, there's some people who didn't like it. They thought it was tedious. Yeah. Um, but I, I didn't mind it. I, I, I liked the idea behind certain things. Um, so that that would be my score. What about you? Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a strong eight point five. Strong eight point five. I think that it has great gameplay, has amazing fundamentals, as in, uh, breaching. It has. Uh, you know the use of the iDroid is amazing. It 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 adds to the Metal Gear um, lore. Just the story. I play Metal Gear Solid because of the story, and I I think I was a little disappointed. I did come in as Ronaldo said. I did come in with extreme high expectations. As the game started getting closer, and more reviewers started talking and talking about. Um, you know, that you could choose whatever mission. I was scared. I was just like, no, th- this is going in the wrong direction. Why? You know, uh, when I f- when we first saw Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain, at uh, the VGAs, I don't know if you remember that. Um, I do, I do. You know, with uh, the whole uh, Moby Dick Studios and all that, you know, it was, it was cool, you know. Immediately, I knew it was Metal Gear Solid. And then I was just like, yes, crawling through the floor and this and the the beginning of the game is perfect that is metal gear solid you know i'm in it for the scripted writing i'm in it for the scripted scenes honestly that's what i'm i'm in it for i'm not in it to play by myself and play my story i'm here to play hideo kojima's story um and i'll give it a strong 8.5 because of that now the online it will probably boost it to a 9 because i love the online the online is a 10 out of 10 <laughs> Well, I, I and I and I know it's gonna get better. Uh, yeah, man, that's uh, those are those are all good, uh, valuable, valuable points. Um, I, I'll tell you, man, that's you. You know, you keep saying that I, I don't want my own story. <laughs> yeah. But I want Helio's story. You gotta say spoiler, but. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe some viewers will get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, they'll, uh... they'll get it. They'll um. I mean, it, it. Just imagine a whole group of, of Metal Gear fans uh, talking about, um, you know, how they did certain missions and how different, you know, just the different opportunities that they yeah. took, and you know, just just mentioning. No, I came in like this. No, I came in like this. Right, you know? right. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess that that's the lore mm-hmm. of of the game. Yeah, and that part is fun. You could come into work. You could come into you know school. Your friends. And talk about wait, you did this mission that way. I didn't even know that was there. And this that part is fun, honestly. Right. That's no, fun. No. Yeah, I, I saw I saw somebody do uh, one of the missions on YouTube, and I was like, hell, he made that crap look easy. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> I mean, people that far beyond pass, you know, our well, gameplay. I mean, no, he literally came in on D horse mm-hmm. on the side, just the entire map. He just went through it mm-hmm. and no one noticed him. And I was just like, what the hell is that? <laughs> I would have been like crawling still and yeah, trying to yeah. shoot them in the head with, with the tranquilizer, of course, <laughs> you know, um, it's, yeah. it's just, so there, there you go. It, you know, you learn different ways to do things. Yeah. Uh, that's our, our point of view of, uh, metal gear, you know, uh, we have so many, you know, things to talk about, and I think we'll probably do like a spoiler cast one day on Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain, the ending. Right, right. We'll we'll talk about all the uh, dirty little secrets, things you probably don't understand that uh, we could probably clear up. Right, right, you know? right. But uh, I want to get into this. This is the first episode. You know, maybe they're finding out which one is our favorite game. So, ah, oh, of course. <laughs> Why don't you lead? Okay. My favorite game, I don't know if you probably got it already, but I speak about it all the time, uh, Metal Gear Solid 3. That is my favorite game in the Metal Gear universe. Metal Gear Solid 4 comes very close to that, um, just because it is a fan service. But uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 is my favorite game. Story is amazing. I 
literally I can play that game like a Mario platformer with the same story, I'll still love it. I would have to uh share in your um sharing your decision in which game is your favorite. Only only looking back and and really in, you know just looking at the story, looking at what it meant, um how dark it was, how sad it was, how it was the beginning of bosses, big bosses descent into just just his own man and his own army and, and, and leaving everything behind, you know, um, can you just imagine, uh, the end of it, not, not the boss, <laughs> the, the end of the story, just, you were sent to kill your, your, the one, the one person who meant the most to you. And, I love it. and it was, it was all a lie. It was all a lie. She didn't betray her country. She she did all of that for the sake of the mission. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if you haven't played MGS by now, but MGS three by now, <laughs> don't turn turn this off now and go to another podcast. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just it's just it could have Big Boss's legacy could have finished with MGS three. Yeah. You, no 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 need for portable ops no need for yeah, peace right. walker no need for grounds it's just he's evil after what happened of course yeah of yeah. course you know uh yeah. so it's kind of like and and then you know you have the the classic love interest who ends up betraying you uh <laughs> and stealing all the information you work so hard for you know and and to find out that the government has been lying to you from the start you know, the, the whole thing is just a lie. It's just everyone you worked with knew and you knew nothing. So it's just, yeah. How do you how do you cope with that? How do you? That's that's Big Boss's story. That's why he became the man who he was. It was just, there's nothing more to live for. Yeah, I've lost the only one. Dear, I say the only one he's ever loved. It's true. I think that. Metal Gear Solid 3 is a really perfect game. Um, I think a lot of people share Part 1 as probably their first game. You know, just because it was, it was innovative. By the way, I mean, send us send us an email. Tell us which one's your favorite game and tell us why. Yeah, absolutely. You can send it to underthecardboardbox at gmail.com. Again, that's underthecardboardbox at gmail.com. Yep. And... Uh, we will respond to you. We're also on Twitter. Yeah, we're the UCBB. The UCBB. <laughs> Just at the UCBB. Uh, find us on Twitter. Yeah, let us know what you think. Uh, let us know if you want us to keep making podcasts. I mean, you, you know, we'll we'll take constructive criticism. Uh, just be a little merciful. We we just ask. We're 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 not professionals at this at all. Yeah, no, um, we just wanted to start this podcast just to really get in there and really have something that we can, you know, just talk about. I think there's a lot of uh, fan service that we can we can kind of have a voice for, you know. So, uh, OK, the last segment, we're in it. <laughs> uh, this is a fun one. This is something Arnaldo and I kind of do. Uh, just when we're out and we're, you know, hanging out and whatever, he would just come out of nowhere and say, guess what line this is from? <laughs> and I'll just say a random line yeah, from whichever one of the Metal Gears. And he has to guess who said it to who, when and where. Yeah. So, uh, Arnaldo, he's more of a, uh, let's say, person that knows dialogue a lot he has a great memory very good memory oh, please me on the other hand not so well <laughs> not so well uh i'm pretty good at the game sometimes but he has this crazy knowledge of it and he likes to test me in it so uh let's play the first game of under the cardboard box trivia all right here we go who said this line ocelot You'll pay for that. Okay. So, 
Can you explain the rules a little? Okay, the while rules. I think about this. <laughs> the rules are, it, there's no partial credit. You have to be pinpoint. You have to tell me who said it, to who, in what moment, so when and where, and what game. Okay. Considering that Ocelot is in every game. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to always make the music. I'm not. Um, let's see. So, Ocelot was in one, two, three, four, five, the main games. Ocelot, you'll pay for this? Yeah. Okay. Ocelot, you'll pay for that. You'll pay for that. Mm, you'll pay for that. Huh. Okay. I'm going to go for Metal Gear Solid 4. And Metal Gear Solid 4, when he said, and Snake is talking to Ocelot. Yes. Metal Gear Solid 4, Snake is talking to Ocelot. Is that your final answer? <sighs> I know this look. Yes. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. You, that's it? Yeah, yeah. That's it? Seriously? All right, all right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on. Give it one more shot. Two okay. out of three. Metal... Uh, okay. Ocelot, you'll pay for that. Ocelot, you'll pay for that. I'm trying to... Notice I'm, I'm not trying to use any voices. I usually do. Uh, my uh, impression of Snake or something like that. And But I, I'm, I'm really trying to be just dry about it. Ocelot, you'll pay for that. <gasps> Wait. Metal Gear Solid 3, the boss. She, he, she, the boss tells uh, Ocelot, you'll pay for that. When? During the torture scene. No. What? No. Seriously? Seriously. Ocelot, you'll pay for that during the torture scene. I could have sworn it happened then. Okay. When was it? Okay. Metal Gear Solid 1. <laughs> Way off. <laughs> Way off. After you get out of the torture scene, Ocelot puts a bomb in, in, your, uh, in your suit. <laughs> and when you throw it, they call you on the codec. And uh, <laughs> Campbell says, oh, you got the bomb out. And, and Snake goes, yeah, Ocelot, you'll pay for that. That was great. That was, <laughs> that was good. That was good. That was good. Yeah, there you go. All right. Um, well, I lost that one. Yeah. <laughs> and and one day we'll do it to you guys. You know, we'll ask you to send emails and or tweets and tell us, you know, what what, what was that line? Yeah. Um, I'll be glad to to take a shot at it or Arnaldo. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 There you go. And that's our show. Uh, again, thank you so much for listening. Uh, this truly has been a dream come true for us. Uh, just talking about Metal Gear. Yeah. Talking about uh, just the awesomeness that is Metal Gear. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows how much this game uh, means to you. I'm pretty sure if you're a Metal Gear fan uh, and how much it's changed my life. And, you know, I'm pretty sure a lot of people. It's It's been a great, great uh, road with this one being the last one. But, uh, again, thank you so much. You can get this show uh, every Tuesday on podcast services, uh, whichever one you subscribe to. Just subscribe to Under the Cardboard Box, and you'll find it on iTunes. And you can email us at uh, Under the Cardboard Box at gmail.com. And you can also, t you know, send us a tweet at the UCBB. Again, that's at the UCBB. Yeah, give us a tweet. Uh, we'll answer your questions there. Let us and, know what you think. Yeah. Um, sincerely, guys, we we want to know. We want to make this a better experience for you guys. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, again, thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening. And we will see you soon. Absolutely. Take care, guys.